Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Kamish Orr, and welcome back to something I like to call Stories from the Maelstrom, a recap of the day's games for this past week of real time. A short day in the baseball maelstrom today. Um, I say that because on May 12th in this league, half the teams are resting, have a day of rest, and the other half are playing. So out of the eight teams, we have four, four teams playing. There's only two games today instead of four. Um, and I'll take, we'll take a look at the schedule here in just a moment. Uh, but let's head over to New York, first of all, where we had the Detroit Rockets taking on the New York Swats. Detroit, first place in the American League. New York in last place in the American League. However, New York got the best of Detroit in this one. Um, actually, Hal Newhauser for the Swats uh, had a pretty incredible game. Uh, Bobby Veach, if we look, was the only player to have a hit up until the seventh inning for the Rockets. Uh, he doubled in the second, he had a single in the fifth, and that was it. Until these back-to-back -back homers by Manny Ramirez and Mark McGuire here in the seventh inning. Uh, those were the only four hits Newhauser would give up, though. He struck out 12. He didn't walk any. The ump had a little bit larger strike zone in this game. We see Roger Clemens uh, for the Rockets went seven innings. He allowed seven hits, four earned runs. He himself struck out 10. Um, so combined, uh, we had we had Louis Tion's strike out in there and combined the team struck out 23 times in this game. Pretty incredible. Uh, on the offense, uh, New York was led by Jimmy Fox, who was three for four. He had a single in the second. He had a solo shot in the fourth. And then he had an RBI double in the eighth. And it didn't really matter at that by that time. Satchel Page picked up his sixth sixth save. Uh, Hal Newhauser improves to five and two. Uh, Clemens drops to five and three. So Detroit drops this one. They're, they fall to 21 and 16. Um, New York improves to 16 and 21. Detroit still has a lead over Boston, the Boston Splinters, for second place in the American League. Um, so that's at least good for them, but uh, but not a very good offensive showing in this one. Let's head to St. Louis. Um, good picture of Ron Santo there. Uh, the Chicago Docks were taking on the St. Louis Wizards, and again, we had a first place team against a last place team. Uh, St. Louis has been having a rough time of it lately. Um, their lead over the LA Dynamos has uh, dropped to just a single game. But uh, they pulled this one out in wild fashion. Uh, we had Doc Gooden on the mound for the Chicago Docks and Robin Roberts for the St. Louis Wizards. And for three innings of this game, it was pretty quiet. Um, we did have an interesting case uh, there in the bottom of the second with uh, Pete Rose on third, where a sharp uh, liner was hit back to the pitcher, deflected off his glove, and uh, Orlando Cepeda uh, caught the ball and threw over to third for a double play. So pretty, pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy play on that one that saved a run there for the Chicago Docs. Uh, so they couldn't score with Pete Rose on third. Um, they'd also ground into a double play the very next inning too. Um, as I said, finally in the fourth, uh, Robin Roberts allowed a solo homer to Albert Pujols that got the Chicago Docs on the board. St. Louis responded with two of their own, uh, two runs of their own, um, with a couple of Actually, three two-out singles in a row. Uh, but one by Ted Simmons, one by Ron Santo, and the other by Rogers Hornsby to score two runs off of Gooden to put them up 2-1. to one. Chicago, though, would tie it up in the sixth uh, thanks to a, an error um, on Santo. Uh, so uh, Ron Santo, he... Uh, comes through on the offensive side, but he 
makes an error on the defensive side in the very next inning that allows Todd Helton to score to tie the game back up at two apiece. However, in the bottom of the sixth, the Wizards would score again off of Gooden. Uh, this time with uh, Gooden would walk in a run. He walked two, two in a row. Um, Ozzie Smith and Oscar Charleston. And one of those uh, was with the bases loaded. So Oscar Charleston draws a walk to walk in a run there to put the Wizards up three to two. And that took us to the eighth inning when... Um, Buster Posey and Todd Helton led off the eighth with singles, back-to-back -back singles off of Robin Roberts. And so St. Louis brought in their closer, Bruce Suter, to try to nail things down with their uh, their lead, their 3-2 to two lead. And uh, Troy Tulowitzki flew out, which uh, was a good start, but then Barry Bonds had a three-run homer off of Bruce Suter to put Chicago up 5-3. to three. Uh, he'd allow a couple more singles after that before getting out of the inning. So in the bottom of the eighth, uh, with Gooden still on the mound, uh, Santo led off of the double. Hornsby walked, and then Ozzie Smith doubled in a run. And then Oscar Charleston singled in another run to tie the game. Roy Oswalt was brought in with Gooden tired. And he did the same thing Gooden did in the sixth and walked two batters, one to load the bases, Tony Gwynn to load the bases, and Larry Walker to put the Wizards up six to five. Now he'd get out of the inning with no more damage done, but it was enough. So Suter stayed in in the ninth and pitched a one, two, three inning to give the Wizards a six to five win. So Chicago had a chance to continue the Wizards losing ways, but they couldn't stop the Wizards from scoring and and beating them. So the Docs fall to 11 and 26 now as the Wizards improved to 24 and 13. Crazy game. Uh, Ron Santa was three for four in this one with an RBI and a run scored. He's hitting 333 this year. Um, and on the Chicago Dock side of things, Todd Helton was three for five with two runs scored. Uh, Barry Bonds was two for four with three of that, that three run homer. He's only hit 252 this season, uh, but he does have 10 homers so far. So that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, let's, if we go to the standings, we can see that. That St. Louis gets a little bit more breathing room over L.A. They're up a game and a half now. Chicago, still the worst record in the entire league at 11-26. and 26. They've actually lost five straight. So, um, a little preview here that we're going to have a rain-delayed game in Fenway on the next day. But I wanted to show you a little bit of... I mentioned there were only two, two games on the schedule today. We can see they were on the 12th here. Um, we had the D Detroit at New York and Chicago at St. Louis while the other teams rested. Now, um, I put together kind of a custom schedule. Um, I wanted no interleague play, so the four American League and the four National League teams only play each other. So, And they were playing a third of a season, so 54 games... Um, for each team, which means that each team is playing the other 18 times, nine away and nine home. So I had to kind of create a custom schedule. I added some off days in here. You can see those are in white. I added some off days um, to uh, give some kind of make things more interesting on the pitching side of things, the pitching rotations. Um, I actually added that before I started doing, um, before I delved into the uh, historical data to find out how many how many, many days of rest each pitcher had, so I could kind of mimic that a little bit. And we see these colored uh, places here on the schedule. The highlighted yellow means I've played that game. 
the other highlighting means that there was a, a rain delay, or excuse me, a rain postponement. So these games here that got over, got bypassed were postponed, and these are the makeup games for those po postponed games. So um, this one is, I highlighted just so that while I'm doing this day, I know that that one was postponed. I'm going to do a double header here on the 14th to make that one up. And then there's another game down here that's a makeup of a prior uh, rain, rained out uh, postponed game as well. And then I keep track of like when uh, players are coming back from injury here, so I know when to bring them back. Um, so yeah, if you're curious, that's kind of how the, the season's set up. I had an all-star break here in the middle to break things up. So really, two months, April and May, uh, will get me through a third of the season, and then we'll have our World Series after that. I'm pretty sure that I'm go going to not do playoffs since there's only four teams in each league. Um, I could do the top two teams in each league, I guess. I could do that. But I think I'm just going to go right to a World Series with the top teams, the top AL team facing off against the top NL team, um, unless there's a one-game playoff that needs to take place or something like that. So I hope that uh, was interesting to you. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer those. Um, but I thank you so much for coming by and watching. As always, head over to BaseballMaelstrom.com to follow all the action. You can find all the stats, all the schedules, all the players, and all of that fun stuff. And my little write-ups on each game as well. Until next time, have a great evening.